Hello everyone, I'm Javad Mir and my project is about intelligent control methods for lower limb exoskeletons. This project is going on at the Telerobotics and Biorobotics Systems Group at the University of Alberta under the supervision of Dr. Mahdi Tarkali. First of all, we are interested in answering this question. What are the advantages of employing exoskeletons in the lower limb rehabilitation goals? Several points can be mentioned for that. First, long-term data collection that make uh, assessment of rehabilitation process possible. Second, assistance level can be adjusted very easily. That is very interesting in most of the rehabilitation applications. Other points like remote rehabilitation for the areas with limited access to the clinics and possibility of social distancing between clinicians and patients during rehabilitation are other reasons that makes using exoskeletons interesting in the rehabilitation goals. All of the previous studies confirmed that different people have different gait patterns. In other words, the amplitude, frequency, and range of motion for the joints change from one person to the other one. Even the gait pattern for one person can be affected and changed because of several reasons like aging or fatigue. However, all of the available exoskeletons in the market are using a predefined fixed trajectories. That's the issue that we have focused on this project. Therefore, we are interested in developing an intelligent control method that can be adaptable with the user's gait pattern and also monitors user's center of mass in order to keep posture stability. So, the control strategy will provide a compliant and safe walking for exoskeleton viewer. Central pattern generator uh, is used to adjust gait parameters of the exoskeleton in order to provide the compatibility with the user's gait pattern. The CPGs are set of differential equations that can produce time continuous rhythmic trajectories of motion. In this project, adaptable CPGs is developed that use human robot interaction toward as input and adjust the amplitude and frequency of gait based on that. Therefore, exoskeleton can adapt user's gait by monitoring the interaction toward. DCM is defined as linear functional position and velocity of central mass of human exoskeletal system. Controlling the DCM at the end of each step can provide the posture stability. But the question is, what is the desired position of the DCM at the end of the step? For a human exoskeletal system, the DCM at the end of a step is functional velocity of walking. Therefore, the DCM part is designed in a way to receive the velocity of walking as input and calculate the desired end-of-step DCM value and adjust the upper body position to reach out the calculated desired value. Uh, the proposed method is illustrated in this animation. Let's consider right leg in the swing and left one in the stance phases. The start of swing is recorded using insole pressure sensors, and this sign denotes CPGs. The difference between foot center of pressure and DCM at the end of a step is defined as DCM offset, which is function of velocity of walking, and the DCM trajectory can be seen here, and the step goes on. User applies resistive interaction torque and decreases the frequency of walking via CPGs. Therefore, the desired DCM offset and the desired DCM at the end of a step will be changed. The upper body position adjustment is done with the exoskeleton to make sure that the DCM will reach the desired value at the end of a step. And this step goes on. And at the end of a step, the swing leg changes to the left one. Okay. The result is summarized here. The applied interaction toward increased frequency of walking from 1.8 to 2.5 radian per second and accordingly modifications applied to the heat joint trajectory to adjust the upper body position. So you can see the parts of the experiments here in this middle. In the next steps of this project, we are interested in adding ankle actuation for controlling posture stability, employing machine learning approaches for providing compatibility with the user's gait, and adding functional electrical stimulation to the previous motor actuations.